never thought she'd see you two together. Nice to see you again, Traveler and Paimon. Oh, we're not interrupting anything, are we? <laughs> not at all. I wasn't in the middle of an interview or anything. I was just asking Miss Kuching about purchasing a kite. A kite? Are you buying some regional specialties to bring back to Fontaine? Well, yes. And... <laughs> it seems you haven't heard yet. The theme of this year's Lantern Rite is kites. Ah, oh, so that's why Paimon has seen so many floating in the sky. Liyue Harbor is always changing, so it is only fitting that Lantern Rite should change in turn. The Qixing believes it would benefit Liyue to build on our own cultural foundation by embracing the technologies of other nations. After all, it is said that the stones of another mountain may serve to better polish one's own jade. Yeah, remember my business meeting with Tian Chuen Ningguang the last time I was in Liyue Harbor? That's what it was about! But all I really did was use my network to introduce Lady Ningguang to some interesting people. I'm not sure that quite counts as fostering cooperation. In the end, we decided to combine Liyue's traditional art of kite making with Fontaine's mechanical vertical lifting device. Mechanical lifting device? Sounds pretty impressive. Uh, but don't kites just use the wind to fly? Why would you need to add something mechanical? Well, you've actually just answered your own question, Paimon. How high and far a kite can fly depends as much on the weather conditions as on the skill of the person holding the string. But as soon as there's no wind, you can only flail about helplessly like a sweet flower medaka out of water. Experience doesn't matter at that point. Exactly. Liyue is now a nation ruled by humans, after all. It's about time we had the power to make a kite fly, don't you think? Plus, the easier we can make it to enjoy, the more people will want to participate. Right? I also thought it was a novel idea. Plus, it shouldn't cost much to do. With Miss Charlotte's help, everything has gone smoothly. Our new mechanical kites are already available to purchase from a stall in the harbor. We're having trouble keeping up with demand. We also gave quite a bit of thought to the price. We didn't want it to be too much more expensive than a traditional kite. Cool! Turns out you two and Ningguang like playing with toys just as much as Paimon! Uh, toys? They're not exactly toys. You see, Miss Kuching? That does seem to be everyone's first reaction. Hmm... Although kites are one of our most time-honored cultural relics, outside of their use in certain ceremonies, I suppose they're considered playthings more than anything now. But to me, there's so much more than that. Think for a second about how remarkable it is that a flimsy paper kite attached to a string has the capacity to touch the sky. It is this slight piece of paper that also carries the weight of Liyue's cultural traditions. There's an old poem that goes, O oh, kite born of paper, flying true and sound, a lone traveler wanders, just waiting to be found. In the past, poets from Liyue used kites to symbolize a feeling of longing or evoke the peacefulness of idyllic rural scenery. If the people of today can derive enjoyment from this activity, they will not only be more likely to better appreciate the tradition, but also to pass it down to the people of tomorrow. That's the Kuching we know, always thinking five steps ahead of anyone else. Well said, Miss Kuching. I've learned quite a bit myself. <laughs> as long as you're willing to listen, I'm happy to share. I also know quite a lot about the various folk traditions related to kites. For example, whenever a kite blew away, people would say it was the Adepti that summoned the wind to take it away as an offering. That way, you can turn an unfortunate event into an auspicious one. What about something... more fun? Do you know anything like that? More fun... Hmm, let me think... Oh. I suppose we should first talk about how kites are made. It's another one of our precious forms of traditional craftsmanship. My grandfather told me that, back when he was a boy, 
children learn the art of kite making step by step from their elders. First, you use the thin strips of bamboo to construct the frame. Then, you draw a design of your choice on a piece of paper, paste it onto the frame, and tie on the string. Then, you look towards the sky and release the kite to soar among the clouds. Some people write down certain names or desires on their kites, cut the string, and let them fly free. Others may place particular thoughts or meaning into the design itself. Are certain designs associated with certain meanings? <laughs> I'm gonna jot all of this down. Hmm. Well, for example, kites in the shape of a butterfly typically symbolize freedom, happiness, or the desire to break free. Fascinating. What else can you tell me? The scissored-tailed swallow is the most classic design. It symbolizes good fortune and joyful tidings. Different colors also have small variations in meaning. Are these commonly understood meanings and symbols in Liyue? Kind of like the language of flowers in Fontaine. Hmm, I believe so. Most have probably heard something about it from their elders at some point. If you're interested, Miss Charlotte, I have several books on the topic that I could lend you. They could be a useful reference. That would be a huge help! Great! Looks like I've got the outline for quite the article on my hands. Perfect! We're gonna take a look around! Then I'll show Miss Charlotte to my home for a little while. I almost forgot. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is hosting a kite flying contest on the Night of Lantern Rite. If you're interested, you're more than welcome to bring a kite and participate. The rules are simple. Whoever flies their kite the highest and furthest within the time limit will receive a special honor along with a secret prize. I've already prepared more than enough empty film for the event. I can see the spectacle already! Oh, Paimon was on board the moment you said secret prize. <laughs> then I'll look forward to seeing your performance. You bet! See you then! Wait, Traveler? Take a peek to your right. Do you see those two people lurking over there? Is it just Paimon? Or were they staring at us the whole time we were talking to Kuching and Charlotte just now? Hmm... They seem to be great, so it wasn't just Paimon. Do you think they could be treasure hoarders? They always seem to be stirring up trouble during Lantern Rite. Oh, Paimon's sick of waiting around for something bad to happen. We should strike first, you know? Foil their plans before they even begin? You go right, Paimon will go left! Oh! It is with such an air of urgency that you appear before us. Your comportment suggests you believe us to have committed some heinous crime. Perhaps you could enlighten us as to your intentions. Whoa! Where did this funny daddy come from? You should be the one doing the enlightening, buddy! Don't think we didn't notice you eavesdropping. One look and we can tell you were up to no good. Tell us everything, starting with your name! Uh... One bears no secrets before two such as yourselves. You stand in the presence of the mighty and illuminated Adeptus, Moon Carver. For the purpose of this foray into the mortal realm, however, you may address one as Hojong. You kidding? That deer's got his head stuck so far up in the clouds, there's no way he'd humble himself down here with the rest of us! Uh, <clears throat> you may want to hold your tongue, Paimon. <laughs> Don't think that Paimon is gonna believe you just because you know her name! Let Paimon guess, you're supposed to be Mountain Shaper, right? Indeed. Mooncarver and myself have descended upon the mortal realm for a visit. The two of you may call me Jiavu. Huh. Looks like you did your research. But in our experience, the harder you try to lead us on, the more likely it is that we've got a big fish on our hands. We'll go straight to the Mulilith 
and have you arrested for impersonating a death guy. Preposterous. Utterly preposterous. Right. Tell us something that only an adeptus would know. And it better not be some common knowledge that any person on the street could tell you. <sighs> During the last Lantern Rite, we gathered at Mount Hulao with Rex Lapis and made use of Cloud Retainer's Supreme Cuisine Machine to prepare bamboo shoot soup. Perhaps you have some recollection? The flavor of that soup was more than enough to whet one's appetite. As such, Cloud Retainer assented to my use of the device beyond that singular occasion, providing other recipes to boot. Since then, one has dabbled in the pleasures of the culinary arts whenever time allows. Dabbled? Upon one's last sojourn to your mountain, did you not immediately attempt to hide the device behind a chunk of amber as soon as one's presence was known? Uh... Did one not speak up on your behalf but a moment ago? This is how you choose to repay that kindness? One is simply trying to emphasize the veracity of our claim. That does not mean you should reveal personal matters so readily. They might think one bears no difference from Cloud Retainer. <sighs> Forget it. One does not have the breath to waste on such petty trifles. Ah, uh, that might have been more detail than we needed. Seems like you two are the real deal, and Paimon sorry for suspecting you. But, uh, for beings as forgiving as yourselves, this is just water under the bridge, right? You indeed have an agile mind. Cloud Retainer was not mistaken in her high estimation of you. Paimon's still curious about something. It's just... Paimon can understand why Mountain Shaper is here, but... Why did you decide to come to the city, Mooncarver? It's not really your thing, is it? Hmm. <sighs> it is but an inevitable eventuality. Long have the mountains remained strangely idle since Cloud Retainer's move to Liu at Harbor. With Lantern right near at hand, one would expect Cloud Retainer to provide us with an account of the festivities in advance. Yet to this day, she has failed to appear. Cloud Retainer is hardly the forgetful sort. One must never rest idle in the face of that which demands action. And since our acquaintances dwell in Liu at Harbor, we had to travel here in human form to avail ourselves of their aid, Cloud Retainers in this case. But a moment ago, one heard you speak of a mechanical kite of sorts. It appears the essence of the situation has hitherto revealed itself. Now it is time for one to retire back to one's abode. Huh. So you're not looking for Cloud Retainer anymore? Perhaps there are aspects of Cloud Retainer's temperament that remain opaque to young Paimon. Given one's understanding, one can only imagine the anger that now consumes her. Cloud Retainer is of a proud and arrogant disposition. She holds the belief that her skill in mechanics surpasses that of all others. One can be quite certain it is hardly with an open mind that she regards the arrival of this new technology. One surmises that she has shut herself away, refused all company, and buried herself in the study of her own creations. To call on her would only invite her rebuke. However, if you do happen to cross paths with her over the next few days, do pass along one's regards. Sure! Leave it to us! Have a safe trip back, enjoy the scenery, and happy lantern right! Thank you for your kind words. We shall now depart. <sighs> we got all worked up for nothing, huh? All that trouble and it turned out to be people we knew all along! Well, it's still pretty early. Let's head over and check out the kite stalls. Paimon wants to see what kinds of kites we can buy to use in the competition. The bigger and prettier, the better! Ah, welcome! Are the two of you looking to buy a kite? Would you like me to go over the different designs? Ooh! A scissor kill swallow! And a butterfly! And... Oh! Ah, this jade chamber design is our newest. It's been selling like crazy over the past two days. Does it also have a unique meaning? Of course. The Jade Chamber symbolizes wealth and abundance. 
The kite bearing its design is said to bring riches in the future to those who fly it. Oh, now that's Paimon's kind of kite! I apologize for the interruption, but are all your wares in order, Miss Genuine? Oh, yes, yes, they're just over there. The paper, bamboo, and dyes. All the necessary kite-making materials. Wonderful! I'll pack them up and get a guard to deliver the goods to Yilong Wharf for you. Yilong Wharf? Oh, wonder what that place is like during Lantern Rite. Paimon would love to go take a look. Well, if the two of you are interested in going to Yilong Wharf, then could I trouble you to find Gaming and deliver these goods together? Is Gaming the guard you just mentioned? Well, yes. The communications office handles shipments and transports around Liyue. He works for the Secure Transport Agency, one of our sub-organizations. Uh, the problem is, many of my colleagues have taken leave during Lantern Rite to spend time with their families. So, our available workforce has seen a dramatic decrease recently. If you were willing to help out, then I could get a head start on my next appointment. You do seem really pressed for time. Oh, wonderful. Uh, you will, of course, be compensated for your efforts. Now, at this time of day, Gaming should be somewhere in the vicinity. Uh, just follow the main road until you see the head of a Wusho dance costume. Should be on your right. Be sure to come back if you'd like to buy a kite. I'll even give you a discount. Wait, I thought we had an agreement. A loser buys dim sum tomorrow? <laughs> Look at you. Scowl like that for much longer and your face might stay that way. Hey now, don't be upset. How about this? You extend the invitation, and I'll pay. Uh, no way, Gaming. You're always the one picking up the tab. I'm not trying to be a sore loser. I just didn't expect you to come from behind to win like that. <laughs> that was nothing. All in a day's work, friend. Perfect. Gaming is here. Sorry to interrupt, Gaming. We just spoke to a guy from the communications office who needs you to deliver some goods to Elon Wharf. Oh, that must have been Longjo. Looks like I've got work. Gotta go. Sure, go do your thing. Uh, let's have a rematch when you get back. I won't let you win so easily next time. <laughs> Alrighty, you can hand the goods over to me. Must have been heavy hauling them all this way. Let me take them off your hands. It wasn't that bad. It's just some kite-making materials. Plus, we didn't have to walk very far. Kite-making materials. I see, I see. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't too much trouble, Paimon. Still, I owe you one. Ah, and you must be the traveler. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for your help. Huh? You know us? <laughs> there probably aren't many in Liyue who don't. I've heard quite a bit about you two. You're quite well known around these parts. Oh, and please excuse Longzhou if he forgot to thank you. Uh, take my thanks in his place. He's a good guy. He's just been super busy lately, running around from place to place. Don't be too hard on him, yeah? So, you here for Lantern, right? Yep. It's always so lively this time of year. We were actually hoping we could tag along to Elon Wharf and have a look around. Perfect. We'll go together then. I'm good with directions, so just follow me. Trust me, I know my way around. We can exchange stories, tell jokes, or just chat along the way. Oh, and there are a couple of good places to eat along our route. We can stop and grab a bite when it's time. The ingredients are fresh, the portions are generous, and the prices won't break the bank. You can order anything, and I promise, you won't be disappointed. Order anything? Did you really have to call Paimon out like that in front of our new friend? <laughs> Don't worry, I understand. I joke around like that with my friends, too. It just shows how close you are. Do you need to pack anything up before we hit the road? I can wait. Nope, our things are always packed and ready. We're pretty much travel experts at this point. Oh, that's right. Then let's get going. If we run into any trouble, you can count on me to protect you. I am a guard, after all. Oh, the docks are just a bit further. One step at a time. Hang in there.
<laughs> Wait, <laughs> get behind me. Subject. I'll handle okay. this. <sighs> Seems like we really can't go anywhere without running into treasure hoarders, can we? Yeah, it's not uncommon for deliveries to get intercepted. That's why this job needs guards like us. I know I was impressed by your moves back there. You seem like a real pro at your job. Oh, <laughs> that's not a skill I learned on the job. It's just a hobby. Have you ever heard of wushou dancing? Really? Wushou dancing is famous in Chenyu Vale. Performers might be invited to promote the opening of a business or to spread good fortune during a holiday season. But I must admit, it has nothing on the popularity of the Li Yue Opera. I'm also well aware that people in Li Yue Harbor aren't exactly jumping at the chance to watch wushou dancing. So it's not something I do full time. Huh? You have two jobs? How do you have the energy to do all that? <laughs> it's not that tiring. You just have to take a rest. Ah, Paimon gets it, so you must sleep a lot then. Not really. Just yesterday, I stayed up all night playing cards. Oh. Uh... Let's go. The docks are just up ahead. We can rest. Oh, Paimon's shoulders are so stiff. And her stomach so empty. Sorry, sorry. Did I push the pace a bit too much? I mean, you were the ones who said you were travel experts. Leo is just too hilly. Floating up and down so much. Where's Paimon now? Oh, Paimon was finally satisfied and now her poor stomach Aw, would you like some winter melon cake? I have some on me that I bought from a store. Yes, Paimon will take all you got! Uh, you might want to pace yourself there, or you'll be too full to eat a proper meal later. Paimon never gets too full. Just like... Oh, just like you apparently never get tired, no matter how far you walk or how many jobs you work. Ah, I see. Then here you go, Paimon. And for you, Traveler. Enjoy! And here's some for you, too, Uncle Bosu. Don't think I forgot about you, my friend. I'll just set it to the side here for you. Oh, that hit the spot. Paimon thought she was going to starve to death for a minute there. <laughs> that close of a call, huh? <sighs> I've been eating winter melon cake ever since I was a kid. You can buy them from all sorts of places, whether it's a small vendor on the side of the road or a big restaurant in the city. But each place produces cakes with a slightly different flavor. If you like these ones, I can give you the address of the shop I bought them from. I'll just have to check when we get back. <laughs> oh, oh, all my jabbering must be making it difficult for you to enjoy the scenery in peace, huh? Don't be afraid to tell me to zip it for a little while, okay? Really, I won't be offended. It's okay. Paimon is kind of enjoying listening to your chitter-chatter. Aw, a fed Paimon is a happy Paimon, huh? <laughs> hey, Paimon can be in a good mood anytime she wants! Need some fresh bamboo for this. Woohoo! We're here! Don't forget your things and uh, watch your step as you get off the raft or you're in for a swim. Thanks for the ride, Uncle Bosu. You take care of yourself now. I'll see you some other time. Okay, follow me. This way is fastest. We'll have to take the elevator up to the secure transport agency. Hey! I slow down. I'm begging ya. What is it? No one's gonna try any funny business when the street is this packed, right?
Oh, well, uh, how should I put it? Come on, spit it out! Do you see that group of people over there? Those are my relatives. Wow, you sure have a big family. Once they start buying things, they won't stop perusing till it gets dark. Oh, this is bad. They're your family, not your arch enemies. What's there to be afraid of? Unless... Oh, did you do something horrible to them? No, it's not that. I'm just... not that good at dealing with my family. It would be best if we could steer clear of them. I'll explain more when we have the chance, but right now, we've got a job to do. Mm, the left side looks pretty packed. Let's go straight. Slow and steady wins the race. Let's wait here for a second. Maybe my aunt will leave. Hello, dear guests. Is there any work that you need done? She's gone! Let's go! Turn left! Run! To the right, and... Uh... Wow, you guys are good! I'm impressed. That was nothing! It was a piece of cake! Oh, winter melon cake to be exact. <laughs> you really liked it, huh? Ooh, you know what? I'll buy you a whole bunch and pile them so high you can swim in them. As long as you don't wind up drowning, Paimon! <laughs> hey, Uncle Jirigoy. These are my friends, the Traveler and Paimon. They came to deliver some goods with me. So, I guess I'll go ahead and take these over to Uncle Yongzan then? Yes. Thanks for your hard work. I should thank you both for your trouble as well. Please take a seat and rest for a bit. I'll prepare some tea. No need. We'll be off soon anyway. Hey, we're already here, aren't we? No harm in taking a load off for a bit. Plus, I know the Secure Transport Agency has some great Songla tea stash around here somewhere. I promise you, one sip and you'll be hooked. Anyway, you just sit down and relax, Uncle Jirgoy. Who would I be if I just sat here and let you go through all this trouble? Leave this to me. I have to be up and about to drop these goods off anyway. What's a little extra time on my feet? Oh, you aren't too picky, right, Traveler? I know Paimon prefers things on the sweeter side, so I won't steep the tea too long. And I'll add some dim sum pastries on the side. Aww, you noticed what Paimon likes? How long have you two known Gaming? Oh, not long at all. We just kind of tagged along on his trip to Yulong Wharf. He's just a super welcoming guy. We became friends, you know, just like that. <laughs> That's just how he is. He's the attentive sort, really knows how to look after his own. A while ago, one of our guards had to take off work, said his joints were hurting due to the rain. Gaming personally went all the way to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get some medicine for him from Dr. Baiju, then traveled through the night to deliver it back to him. That young man has such a good head on his shoulders. How can anyone not love him? I mean, there is his dad, but... Well, ask anyone else, and... Uncle Yongzan says he doesn't have the personnel to spare for this delivery right now. So what do you think, Uncle Jirigui? Should I go ahead and deliver it instead? Ah, <sighs> it feels like we've troubled you enough already. It's kite-making materials, though. Could be for a kid. 
I'm sure the sender wants it delivered before lantern ring. Oh, uh, by the way, here, have some tea. All right, then. Deliver it if you want to. Ooh, are you free in two days? How about we grab some dim sum from Xinyue Kiosk? My treat, and don't even think about trying to pay. Whoa, that's way too generous of you. Uh, don't mention it. Just think of this as a thank you for all your help. Besides, the thing between me and my family... It's a long story. It might take some time to tell. Sounds good! Paima never says no to free food. Alright, then I'm off. See you in two days. Oh, and Paimon, make sure not to eat too much before then. Don't say I didn't warn you. Is he underestimating Paimon? <laughs> She's just gonna have to show him how much she can really eat. Anyway, is Gobin's family situation really that complicated? He has such a happy-go-lucky personality. Plus, he's an enthusiastic and diligent worker. It's hard to imagine a guy like that being troubled by much. Hmm, how should I put it? Since he already plans to tell you himself, you don't need an old man like me to add my two cents. You seem to be around the same age, so you might have a lot in common. Perhaps you could help him talk things through. Consider it a favor to me. If you have the time, maybe you can make a little flag for us to wave about. It can say, we provide aid in spades. Couldn't hurt to advertise our services, right? Well, I can certainly arrange that. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Wait, seriously? Paima was just joking. But if you're going to get us something, she'd much rather have winter melon cake instead. <laughs> yeah, it seems like Gaming really has rubbed off on you. Would you like some more tea? I think there's some left. No thanks. We came all this way and still haven't gotten a chance to look around the wharf. We should see the kinds of kites they got. Maybe they'll have ones you can't find in Liyue Harbor. All right, then. Please do let me know if you'd like more tea. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. Ah! What are you doing here? Huh. The way you speak. One might have presumed you were displeased to be in one's presence. Take note, Paimon. You could learn a thing or two about how to respect your elders. Ugh, starting on the elder stuff already, huh? Shouldn't you be back in your cave tinkering away at some kite-related thingamabob or something? What brings you out here? And what's with that huge box next to you? Ah! Paimon gets it. You're here to do some shopping, aren't you? And what of it? The Qixing's decision to integrate Fontanian technology into said kite-flying competition is of no consequence to oneself. Did you expect one to willfully compete against the whimsical trends of worldly sentiment, or perhaps even fall to petty sulking over such? Um, it's not that we think those things exactly. That's just what Mountain Shaper and Mooncarver told us, or... Tia something and ho... Paimon can't be bothered to remember what their aliases were called. Anyway, they went to Liyue Harbor to look for you. They even asked us to pass along their regards if we ran into you. Oh, huh. Tianyun? Huh. Huh, it appears time has quite flown since one's arrival in Liyue Harbor. How could one have forgotten about those two old fossils? <sighs> one shall have to bring them back some divine herbs to atone for this slight. Nay, given that one has ventured all this way to Yilong Wharf, tea would be more advisable. A great thought has illuminated one's mind once again. One is reminded that certain purchases have yet to be made. Perhaps you two could wait here whilst one performs this task. It'll be but a moment. Oh, that woman really just does whatever she wants. Hey, now you too, Traveler! Oh, all this time on ditching is super not appreciated. Oh, just come back soon, okay? Paimon... Paimon doesn't want anyone to try and steal the stuff. 
Welcome. Please have a look around. We only sell teas of the finest quality, sourced directly from Chaoying Village. Might I recommend the Songlo variety? It's one of our specialties. Now, that sounds promising. One will bring some back for those old fossils, and all will be well. Two boxes will do. Wonderful. By the way, we're actually running a special Lantern Rite promotion. Buy three boxes, get 10% off. Four boxes will net you 20% off. Hmm. 20% off four boxes. This merchant strikes a fair bargain. One might as well give some to Morax and Ping, too. Then four shall suffice. Hmm, I see. Are you intending to give these as gifts? If so, perhaps I can interest you in these exquisite gift sets. Buy ten, get half off. Look at the magnificent design. And the red ribbon gives quite the festive flair, don't you think? Such a gift would be sure to impress any lucky friend or family member. Hmm, ten boxes. Seems rather excessive. But if one factors in the conqueror of demons and one's disciples... Hmm... Ten! A nice round number, don't you think? Of course you do. I'll even shave a little extra off the price for you. That is agreeable. One will... Um, I will have these boxed up then. Of course, of course. Right away! I see you have quite the eye for fine items, mademoiselle. Perhaps some of my wares might also be of interest to you. I'm a toy merchant from Fontaine. You'll get nothing but the finest and most intricate clockwork toys Mora can buy here. Each one sure to be a source of endless amusement. Perhaps you could enlighten me, then. When should said amusement be derived? Well, uh, that is, of course, best understood by playing with them yourself. If you could wait just a moment, I can bring one out and give you a demonstration. <sighs> there is no need for that. Uh, mademoiselle. Give me your newest and finest model, and be sure to package it securely. Ah, oh, of course. Here you go. The instruction manual is... I can do without. Thank you. Oh, many watchful eyes surround this place. If one were to be spotted purchasing a mechanical toy such as this, a child's plaything no less, it would only invite scandal. There is no harm in bringing it back to study in secret. Oh, Xinyan! Did your shopping go smoothly? <sighs> Naturally. One may not delight in social interactions, but that does not mean one lacks said faculties. And you too? Are you not here to purchase things? We just haven't had time yet. It doesn't look like there are any kite stalls around Elong Wharf, but it does look like there are lots of goods from Fontaine. You are also planning to participate in the kite-flying competition, then? <clears throat> One means to say, you along with all the other youths. One has been entreated to share one's kite-making expertise, and indeed, there was little one could do about such persistent supplication. One moment energetic and earnest, and dejected the next. One had no choice but to acquiesce to these requests, and thus, one will be organizing a kite-making workshop to provide personal instruction in this art form. Oh! Who will be participating then? Shuyu, Shenhe, Ganyu, and Yayo. Wow, that's quite a few people. Also, this is all pretty well, Xinyun, but it's not like you have to make your own kite to participate in the competition. You can't just buy one ready-made and call it a day. Ha! Huh. You speak of those equipped with the mechanical lifting device, do you not? Ah, <sighs> tis nothing but a crude piece of mortal machinery. 
The mechanism that one has developed was the fruit of millennia, of meticulous study. Let us not speak of the source of the mechanism's power, but rather its structure. It is composed of materials as light as bamboo and as strong as iron. This composition grants it the lightness of weight to ascend into the sky and the durability to follow the wind for many a mile. It is built with a series of intersecting rods that... <sighs> Never mind. It is unlikely the two of you will understand, even should one expend the effort to explain. One is better off saving one's breath. It sure seems like you want to talk about it, though. So, will you be attending the workshop or not? Huh? Wait, you've been trying to invite us this entire time? All right, then. No need to prepare the materials in any case. One has it all sorted. Arrive at Mount Outsong in two days. I shall be expecting you around midday. Are you leaving? Don't you want a guard to help you with that big box of yours? <laughs> Surely you jest. One goes as one pleases. For what reason would one need to rely on another? Uh, it can float? What kind of invention is that? One calls it the floating toting device. She seems pretty proud of that one. Look at her walk down the street. She seems so confident. But everyone around her is looking at her all funny. Paimon wonders... Ah, uh, never mind. But anyway, that box of hers seems to be full of those mechanical lifty thingamabobs. Uh, not that Paimon was peeking or anything. She just... Uh, got a bit unsteady for a second and accidentally brushed the embroidery on top. And wouldn't you know it, all the stuff inside almost came bursting out. Paimon even went out of her way to keep it all together. All Paimon say is that Xian Yun sure does try hard to save face. What did she call it again? A crude piece of mortal machinery? Paimon bet she just can't wait to take it apart and see how it's made. Totally. We should probably act like we didn't see anything, though. You know, in consideration of her feelings and all. After all, that is the propriety with which one should comport oneself. When it comes to an elder, right? I have never had dim sum at Shinyue Kiosk before, but it should be quite the feast for sure. Ooh, and that's Paimon's stomach right on cue telling her it's time to go find Gami. Let's go! Oh, you're here early. I just ordered. The food should be out in a second. Uh, sit down, sit down. Let's all take a seat. Here, hand me your cups. Oh, thank you. Wait, uh, uh, you weren't supposed to drink that, Paimon. That was for you to rinse your utensils. Uh, that's a thing? delicious food. Do you really eat all this just for breakfast? <laughs> That's just how we do it where I'm from. Most of the time, though, I don't eat lunch after dim sum. Oh, that's good to hear. Paimon doesn't need to worry about holding back, then. Eat, eat. If it's not enough, we can always order more. Oh, and there's tong soy coming as well. I don't usually have that in the morning, but, well, since everyone's here, I just had to order it. What about you, Traveler? Is the food to your liking? 
Uh, want some more seafood kanji? Let me refill your bowl. Paimon's gonna take you up on that. Fill it up nice and full and make sure she gets a few extra shrimp. Thanks! for a second, Gumming. You invited us to this awesome restaurant and ordered a whole table full of expensive dim sum just for the three of us. Well, you must be hiding the fact that you're some young master from a rich family. That would explain why you try to keep your friends and family away from each other. <laughs> Are you confusing me with Xingqiu? sure know a lot of people. Hmm. Well, when you're on the road as much as I am, you hear all sorts of rumors. Sometimes they're true, sometimes they're not. What it comes down to is being able to tell the difference. More often than not, that means knocking on some doors to find out for yourself. Oh, you truly are a man of many talents, young Master Gaming. Okay, okay, enough with the teasing. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble, Paimon, but you're wrong about my family situation. What? Oh, Paimon thought she was onto something there. My dad is just an ordinary tea merchant. Small scale stuff, you know? It wouldn't even make sense to mention his business in the same breath as the Feiyun Commerce Guild. My dad. He always wanted me to inherit the family business, to be a merchant like him. But that's just not who I am. That's not who I ever wanted to be. Of course I have. I, I told him I wanted to be a wushu dancer. That I wanted all of Tavat to see what I could do. According to my dad, though, that wasn't a real job. Just a child's pipe dream. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sure he thought I would come around eventually, but wushu dancing has always been the only thing I wanted to do. One day... He tried to get me to visit some other tea merchants to start building the right relationships, but I refused to go. We got into a huge fight. We, we were this close to throwing hands. In the end, I was so angry that I, I ran away from home. I haven't been back since. Uh, don't get on my case just yet, okay? It's not like I think I'm completely without fault. No, I know that it wasn't the right way to go about things. But my dad's stubborn. No matter how hard I tried to convince him, it just went in one ear and out the other. There was no changing his mind. I knew talking would only get me so far, but if I made it big in Liyue Harbor, the results could speak for themselves. Coming. But I'm sure you both already know how that's going. Wushou dancing's just not that big in Liyue Harbor. In the past, I would go door to door from store to store, asking if they would be interested in hiring a performer. Most times, I wound up eating nothing but humble pie. <laughs> and you can't just rely on dreams to put food on the table, right? So, I found a job as a guard to make some money. And now I have enough to get by and then some. Still, change takes time. Gotta take it slow, you know? Paimon understands. Okay, enough of all that serious talk. Our tea's getting cold. Ooh, let's do something fun this afternoon. What do you say, huh? I'll organize. Actually, we kind of already have plans this afternoon. We told Xian Yun that we would go to her kite-making workshop. 
Oh. Are you interested in kite making, Gaming? Oh, no. It's just that I happen to know Auntie Shenyun. That title certainly humanizes her a bit. Oh, I know that she's an adeptus. I met her during a delivery once. But hasn't she been in the city lately? She's even tried, with some limited success, to change her terms of self-address or something like that. She came to see me a few days ago to ask about luminescent dyes. Oh, wait a second. She doesn't plan on putting those on a kite, does she? Is that not something you can do? It's one thing to use it on cloth, but applying it to paper is another matter entirely. Why couldn't she tell me what she wanted them for? Yeah, she does seem to have trouble with that sometimes. It would be such a shame if everyone worked so hard on their kites only for them to get ruined in the end. Okay, I'll go with you. If Auntie Xianyun wants to use those dyes in a kite, the formula will need to be changed. Great! The more the merrier! Ganyu! Ganyu! Come on, wake up! Some friends have arrived! Hello, friends. <sighs> hmm. uh, you. Oh, I have some mint oil. Perhaps we should try that. A guest at Wanmin Restaurant recommended it to me. I've tried it. Its stimulative effects are much stronger than what can be achieved from chewing on mint leaves alone. <sighs> Hmm. Apologies in advance. Wait! Shen He! Not there! <coughs> See? It worked. She's awake. Uh, are you okay, Ganyu? Do you need some water? Or or maybe something to eat? I... I'm fine. I just feel... chilly all over. <laughs> huh. Was it that effective? Chilly, huh? Mm, the Master always says a cool head leads to a calm heart. So... Does this mean that heat's what we need to help you, Ganyu? Uh, Pilot doesn't think that's what the expression means exactly. Oh, I... I feel a bit better now. Was I asleep? Must have been around the time I usually take my midday nap. Did you not sleep last night? That does seem to happen to you often. Hmm, perhaps you should come work at Wanmin Restaurant with me. We get off at ten on the dot every night, without fail. I... I could never... I'm sorry, I seem to have missed your name. You are... <laughs> Me? My name is Gaming. I work as a guard for the Secure Transport Agency. Gaming... The name sounds familiar. I believe I've heard your name mentioned around the Ministry of Civil Affairs. People tell me you're an extremely enthusiastic worker. And you are very generous with your help. Uh, well, you know me. <laughs> or, uh, I guess you don't. <laughs> My name is Ganyu. This is Shenha. And this is Yao Yao. It's an honor to finally meet you all. Oh, you must be here for Auntie Shenyun's kite making workshop, right? Yes. I have neither made nor flown a kite before. As long as Master is willing to teach, I am willing to learn. Me too! I want to participate in the kite flying competition with my best friend! Plus, it's more meaningful if you make the kite yourself, right? Your best friend didn't come with you? Well, Chi Chi's been super busy helping Dr. Baiju lately. I'll meet up with her later and give her a huge surprise! Oh, I also brought bandages and ointment with me today. 
It's easy to cut yourself when working with bamboo, so I thought I should come prepared. Wow, you're really thoughtful. As for myself, I'm afraid I lack some of my companion's enthusiasm. I was originally planning to buy a ready-made kite and just enjoy the festive city atmosphere with everyone. But Cloud Retainer is always going out of her way to look after her juniors, wanting us to have the best there is. She always puts us before herself. Huh. It was so thoughtful of her to arrange this workshop, so I simply couldn't let such consideration go to waste. My motivation for being here might be a little different, yes. But I'm ready to put in just as much effort as everyone else. Well, we're all here. But where the heck is Xin Yun? Shouldn't she be here by now? Who is it that speaks of oneself in such an ill-tempered tone? Oh, come on! You clearly heard Paimon! Master stopped to buy grilled tiger fish to share with everyone. Come get it while it's still warm. Oh, oh Paimon, sorry, Miss Illuminated Bird! Paimon always knew you were the smartest, coolest, and prettiest adeptus. Someone as wonderful as you is sure to have brought enough for Paimon as well, right? Delicious. Paimon's life is complete! Hmm. It appears that we've ended up with quite a few participants indeed. Go ahead and divide yourselves into small groups. The materials are over here. The regular dyes and luminescent ones have been clearly marked. Use them as you see fit. As for how to make the kite, one assumes you all made sure to listen to the instructions one provided while we were eating. Yes? Are there any questions? Paimon may have focused a little too hard on the eating and less on the listening. Paimon knew she could count on you, Traveler! One will wait under this tree and avail oneself of the cool air while one digests. Do not hesitate to seek one's company if you have any trouble, questions, or simply want to chat. We're not in any hurry to get started. Why don't we go see what the others are up to? Hey, Gaming! Want to team up? Huh? W I have to participate? I thought I'd be done for the day after adjusting the dye formula. You're that unenthused by kite making, huh? That doesn't seem like you. No, it's not that. It's just... Uh, it would take too long to explain. I guess I'll just make one then. Hmm... What shape should we go with? How about a butterfly? What do you think, Shuyu? Is there a particular design you want? I want a swanee! Uh, that might be a little hard to pull off. True, but I still want to try. They're super cute! <laughs> okay, it's decided then. <laughs> Auntie Cloud Retainer, look! Am I doing it right? Hmm, very good. Your frame is nice and sturdy. This design, is it a finch? <laughs> yep. <laughs> One is looking forward to seeing your finished product. What color are you going to make it, Yao Yao? Um, I haven't decided yet. If I make it blue, it'll be more like my friend. But if I make it gold, it'll be more like me. If you are asking for one's own opinion, one would advise choosing gold. When giving a gift, the key consideration is the recipient's feelings, is it not? One imagines your friend would much prefer a kite that reminds them of you. Oh, hey, I never told you the kite was for Chi-Chi. How did you know? With age comes wisdom, child. One simply has a way of knowing things. Oh, cool! <laughs> Thanks, Auntie Cloud Retainer. I'm gonna start painting it gold right now! Good. One will watch. You two seem strangely unoccupied. One was under the impression that one was supposed to be doing the relaxing. Is your kite finished? Oh, we... Uh, 
actually haven't started yet. But we're going to start, uh, right now! <laughs> um, Shenhe, it would be great if you could refrain from putting things on my horns from now on. They're really quite sensitive. I see. My apologies. I shall remember that in the future. Thank you. No harm done. Good. Could I touch them just once more, though? No oil or anything this time. I've just always wondered what Miss Ganyu's horns feel like. Huh? Please, I told you. Just call me Ganyu. Uh, well, all right. Just be gentle. Hmm. Firm to the touch with no discernible temperature. Oh, not unlike certain medicinal plants I've eaten before. Oh, still, Ganyu appears to be shaking like a cat whose whiskers have just been touched. I should stop. Uh... Oh, I see. Then I'll apply the oil to your forehead next time. Oh, no need. I'll just... refrain from taking afternoon naps outdoors. <coughs> anyway, we should probably get started on our kite. It won't be long before Cloud Retainer comes to check on our progress. Perhaps... Perhaps we should just choose the most traditional style. Okay. Well, they seem to be getting along swimmingly. Let's not disturb them. First, we have to decide on the shape. Hey, what are you laughing at? Oh, that's not a completely crazy idea. If nothing else, a Paimon-shaped kite could at least make sure you never get lost on your travels and always find the tastiest food and funnest things to do wherever you go. Maybe we're not exercising enough artistic license. Ooh, we should exaggerate this a bit. How about this? The word Paimon means the guardian angel of travelers. should we give her, since the kite is going to be flying super high in the sky? Ooh, like this? <laughs> the title of Champion Kite Flyer is mine! Now that we've decided, let's make it happen! Gather around, everyone. Oh! Shenyun's calling us! Hmm. Let one take a look. a lot like Master. If the tail wasn't split in two like that, it might even be a spitting image. Uh, if you look closely, there are a few spots where the colors go outside the lines. Did you doze off while painting it on you? I did the painting. I stared at the paper for quite some time, but I simply could not recall the coloring of any bird. <laughs> Except Master. Or should I say that I'm too familiar with her crane form? Even when she stands before us in human form, all I can see is blue and white. Oh! Well, now that you mention it, Paimon can see it too! Exactly. So I simply closed my eyes and painted from memory. No way! You, you can paint with your eyes closed? Wow! The disciples of Adepti really are something! You are most filial, Shenhe. One is flattered by the likeness. 
The swanee that Gao Meng and Shu Yu made looks very majestic. I'm sure it'll look even more impressive as it soars through the sky. The eyes and ears glow in the dark, so you're sure to see it at night. Your golden finch is cute too, Yao Yao. <laughs> it's all thanks to Auntie Cloud Retainer's guidance. What about your kite, Traveler? Ta-da! Here it is! Hmm. Its self-important countenance bears a striking resemblance to that of its namesake. It makes her look like she's already won the competition. Well, that's gonna happen one way or another. Hm. Is that... the Jade Chamber? Oh? dares attempt such a flagrant display of impropriety by releasing a kite into one's territory without one's permission. Oh, and to do so by making use of this crude piece of mortal machinery. Oh, one simply must know who it is that possesses such impertinence. Continue attaching the strings, everyone. One will be but a moment. Cloud Retainer! Traveler, Paimon, could I trouble you to go after Cloud Retainer? Master's going to be okay, right? I'm more worried about the person who released the kite. There's wind up ahead! Looks like we can glide over! This Fontanian device of mechanical motion is quite curious indeed. Now is hardly an opportune time for your musings. Someone among us was not sufficiently attentive, and now the kite has vanished. Calm yourself. Do you have any recollection of its last location? One believes it drifted in the direction of Mount Outsong. Perhaps it is mere happenstance, but one feels a certain sense of dread at the thought. Your concern is misplaced, surely. Cloud Retainer is either in the city looking after her disciples, or secluded in her abode attending to her research. She will not notice that kite. On the subject of said kite, however, one simply must remark on the genius of its windless lift technology. One cannot help but surmise that its ingenuity rivals that of Cloud Retainer's creations. Still thy tongue. If Cloud Retainer were to hear you profess such a thing, we can both say farewell to any further use of the Supreme Cuisine Machine. One presumes that this kite belongs to you. Huh? Regard the situation with which we are now confronted. This is all your fault. One's fault? One seems to recall that releasing the kite was no solitary endeavor. Say something, Mountain Shaper. Surely you can think of something to appease her? Further explanation shall only fan the flames of her wrath. It would be better to stay silent and retire at the earliest opportunity. We can hardly avoid her forever. That may suffice during Lantern Rite. But what about the Moon Chase Festival? Sooner or later, she will discover our true identity. <sighs> Hello? Go retrieve the kite. Absolutely not. You retrieve it. That is not our kite. Oh, so an adeptus such as oneself is mistaken then? Ah, you're an adeptus? Please forgive us for any impropriety. 
I truly possess no inkling of who could have released a kite into your esteemed domain. Pray, who could be responsible for such wanton behavior? Verily, verily, we were but delighting in the surrounding scenery. This locale is home to such exquisite... Uh, ah, mint! Well, and if that's all, then we'll just be on our way. Huh. We finally caught up. You sure do fly fast in your illuminated bird form, Chinyin. Mooncarver? Mountainshaper? What are you doing here? I... You! It is of no consequence. Long has one seen through their disguises. One was simply curious as to how long they would keep up the act. Then you are not angry? Hm. How could one feel anger at the sight of two old friends enjoying themselves? One is also well aware of how enticing these city novelties can be. We were simply consumed by a fit of festive spirit. Seldom do we get the opportunity to partake in the delights of the times. However, we are far from being as adept as you in matters that require a deftness of hand. No worthy kite could be born of our own making. Thus, we could only take the convenient route, so to speak. Your prowess in mechanics is unparalleled, Cloud Retainer. You wield the wind and waves themselves. Your singular talent stands unmatched across the land. Of this, we are well aware. <sighs> One has guests to attend to. We will have to convene again some other time. Traveler, Paimon, do try to keep up. We're leaving already? Oh, all this flying from place to place is wearing Paimon out. <sighs> it seems that one's concern was misplaced after all. Then, should we continue flying the kite? A splendid suggestion, but it would be advisable to change locations. Perhaps your mountain would suffice? It is more than spacious enough. A fine idea. A fine idea indeed. They're back. <gasps> Paimon's pooped. Uh, huh? Why are there only two of you left? After you left, Yao Yao and Shu Yu tired themselves out playing with their kites. Gao Ming offered to escort them home. Before he left, he said something that I don't quite understand. Oh? What did he say? He said, A kite is always tied down no matter how far it flies or how high it soars. Its tether prevents it from ever truly flying free. He looked quite dejected as he said this. Now that you mention it, Gaoming did seem to have a rather strange attitude towards kites. A reflection of himself. Oh, if I were a kite, I would cherish that tether as a symbol of kinship and the bonds that tie us and... Shenha? It may be an exceedingly slim and distant connection, but lose it, and you lose that which links you to home. If Gaoming truly sees a kite as a reflection of himself, then I fear I understand his words even less. Well, people often have different points of view depending on their mindset and experiences, right? It's actually quite normal. Just like some people can eat spicy food, but others won't go anywhere near it? Exactly. That's why tolerance and understanding are as important as they are. It Tolerance and understanding? What brought about this conversation? Did one miss something? 
We were just chatting. You don't have to butt in on every little thing, you know. Where were you anyway? Hmm. One was merely doing a bit of cooking. Night fast approaches. If you are otherwise unoccupied, one would entreat you to stay and eat before you depart. Oh, it's been so long since I've had the chance to enjoy your cooking, Cloud Retainer. Uh... Worry not. One has prepared a variety of meat and vegetable dishes. One is more than familiar with everyone's culinary proclivities. Hey! Paimon's hungry too! It's not like the dim sum and grilled fish could keep her full the whole day, you know? Shenhe, Ganyu, come with me. Whoa, what's with all the secrecy? You're not trying to play favorites, are you? If you're ready to serve the food, we can help too. Feel the wind brushing against my legs. This is a bit embarrassing. Is the headpiece secure? I should have asked Cloud Retainer to check before I stepped outside. How do we look? Huh? She asked them just like that? You look pretty too, Ganyu! you? Oh, how should Paimon put it? Uh, you both look so elegant and refined! Those outfits really suit you both! Given that one employed the services of the best tailor in all of Liyue, one would expect nothing less. What colors have you been partial to lately, Shenhe and Ganyu? Lately? Why is Cloud Retainer suddenly asking about what colors we like? I like black. One is gratified to see one's disciple has inherited one's own tastes. The color black doesn't get dirty easily. A virtue I've come to value recently. And you, Ganyu? I favor blue and black. And the material is sufficiently comfortable, yes? Yes, very. I simply cannot thank you enough, Cloud Retainer. For this gift. And the kite, too. Thank you, Master. One is content, as long as you are pleased with the gift. One hopes these garments will see much use. traveled all this way on account of the kite-making workshop, and he spent the whole afternoon looking after Shu Yu. One was hoping to treat him to a meal. <sighs> oh, well. One will just have to extend one's thanks in person. It's rare for someone to make such a good impression on you, Cloud Retainer. <laughs> one has high standards. He appears to be a young man of much merit, and one is not the type who would see such potential squandered. It appears that he wishes to break free from the kite string that tethers him. Kite string? Huh, what strange metaphors you speak in, Shenhe. Ever since you returned from one mean restaurant, your turns of phrase render one at quite the loss. Where do we even begin? Oh, do you know about the conflict between Ga Ming and his dad, Xin Yun? One has only heard that the two are not on good terms. He ran away from home and hasn't been back since. Oh? Ran away, you say? Oh. One believes we would all benefit from a more thorough retelling. Start from the beginning. Oh, okay. Paima 
Ren just hopes he won't mind. What? This shall not do. Lantern right fast approaches. We must make haste. As one was contacting various tailors around Liyue, one could not help but be reminded of Minogius. He possessed a singular talent for clothing design. He had an exquisite eye, not just for fabric selection and color pairing, but also for what accessories could best accentuate a garment's overall styling. At a gathering of Adepti, Bonanus once complained in secret to some of the ladies in attendance that the skirt Minogius made for her was too long and impractical, lamenting that it would only hinder her in battle. However, when one asked Minogius his opinion, he remarked that the train of the skirt would serve to enhance her adeptal countenance by exemplifying a certain elegance. Minogius was that type of person. When it came to topics relating to garments and accessories, not even Rex Lapis could best his stubbornness. And later... <clears throat> uh, one seems to have strayed off topic. One means to say that Lantern Rite should be a day of reunion. It is a time to address problems before they turn into regrets. Fate is fickle. The cruel reality of this world is that suffering and misfortune can befall any of us without design or reason. If there is a chance for young people to remain insulated from this reality, one should do one's utmost to make it so. That's nice and all, but... Do you have any ideas, Cloud Retainer? Hmm. Perhaps adeptal arts could be of use. Oh, no, no. Mechanics, perhaps. One fails to see its use in a situation such as this. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. Combining our efforts is a fine idea indeed. Aha! One has an idea! How about this? Does that make sense to everyone? Yep! Oh, Paimon really hopes this works. Hmm. One's designs never fail. Now then, I counsel rest for all, and to make the necessary preparations. One shall see you in two days. It's time to carry out the plan! Let's go find Gaming! Hope everything goes well. Sees you've certainly gotten an early start this morning. Playing games already, are we? Who won this time? You the one buying dim sum again? Hey, when you put it like that, it makes it sound like I'm always the one losing. Ah, perfect, you're all here. Uh, there's an important commission I need your help with. All right, I've got the time. Where are the goods? Well, it's not just goods this time. I need you to escort a tea merchant and their wares from Chaoying Village to Liyue Harbor. A very important client has requested to meet with him. Sure. Uh, what's this merchant's address? Well, here. Uh, uh... If the client's that important, then this must be a very crucial, very pressing commission, right? Um... Of course, the sooner you complete it, the better. I would advise you to depart as soon as possible. <laughs> All right, um, don't work too hard now, Longjo. We'll set off then. You're a bit quiet today, Gaming. Oh, do you want Paimon to tell a story? Uh, we're almost there. I'll take a rain check on that. Hello! You must be the tea merchant heading to Liyue Harbor. We're here to escort you! Hmm. Dad? Oh, so you're Gaming's father! 
Father. It's nice to meet you. Just leave this delivery to him. Trust Paimon, he's got this in the bag. Gaming is super good at what he does. Everyone at the Secure Transport Agency says as much. Even the Ministry of Civil Affairs has nothing but good things to say about him. Seems like you've made some sort of name for yourself, at least. The... the goods are all in order? Yes, they're all here. Then let's get going. Uh, a very important client has asked for you by name. You kind of have to come with us. Paimon doesn't know how we would explain ourselves if you just didn't show up. Plus, you'd be missing out on a huge money-making opportunity. I see. I suppose I will have to trouble you all to escort me, then. Let's go. We've been walking for so long! Is anyone tired? How about we stop and rest for a bit? I'm fine. Uh... Gaming! Don't you usually have some delicious snacks on you? Come on, bring them out so we can share them! I'm fine. Thank you. Uh... But the winter melon cake he gave us last time was so delicious. Have you ever tried it before, Mr. Ip? Uh, Paimon... This place looks nice and open. Why don't you all rest here for a second? Huh? What about you? You're not going to join us? I'm not tired. I'll keep watch. Oh, but... Just let him go. Ourselves, then. Did you know, Uncle Ip, that the flavor of these cakes changes depending on... Halt! Who goes there? It appears that one's movements were overly conspicuous. Enough of your musings. Focus. Focus on the matter at hand. Present your exquisite ornaments at once. Indeed. Bring them forth readily and without protest. Ah! What do we do? It seems as if these two are acting alone. It won't be difficult to subdue them, but they might have something else waiting in store for Dad. The best way to keep him safe is... Leave this to me. I'll handle them. Traveler, Paimon, take my dad and the goods away from here. No, coming. It's too dangerous! This is what I do. A thorny foe indeed. Let us depart and seek a target softer in blows and disposition. Uh-uh. Don't think I'm gonna let you off so easily. Away. Let us away. Coming! Don't worry. He's a great fighter. Paimon's even seen him take down a dozen or so treasure hoarders all by himself! But coming, I... <sighs> if he had just stayed by my side and learned a family trade, he wouldn't have to put himself in such dangerous situations. We just have to trust him! Let's go on ahead! We'd best get away from here, in case there are other bandits in the area waiting in ambush! All is going to plan. Okay, we should be good to stop here. Young Lee? Oh no, what is he doing here? Good sir, please listen to me. Reel in your line and leave this place as quickly as you can. There are bandits in the area. Bandits? Acting in broad daylight? <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, 
I see. It appears many people are catching a chill as of late. If your throat is bothering you, Paimon, perhaps some tea and rest are in order. Uh, nope, no need, no need. Paimon's fine. She just, uh, had some cake stuck in her throat. If there are indeed bandits in the area, then we should inform the Millilith at once. Oh? Well, if that's the case, such matters are best left to those with the necessary expertise, wouldn't you agree? <sighs> I suppose you're right. If ordinary people like us got involved, we would only cause more trouble. Since we find ourselves otherwise unoccupied in this beautiful area, why don't we find a quiet place to relax while we wait for good news? Hmm... That would be lovely. So, uh, Uncle Ip does have a reason to be worried. After all, Ga Ming, the guard we mentioned, is his son. Ga Ming... The name sounds somewhat familiar. Ah, yes. That is the name of the Usho dancer who has been performing around Liyue Harbor recently, is it not? Oh, have you seen him perform? Indeed. I cannot help but admire his skill. He truly encapsulates the spirit of the Suani. Usho dancing has become more well known in Liyue Harbor recently. However, although performers are seeing budding success, they have no doubt had to face many hurdles along the way. One's not so easily understood by spectators such as ourselves. If you ask me, what truly deserves admiration is perseverance in the face of adversity. That is a rare attribute indeed. I have heard many of my acquaintances praise Gumming for his kind, selfless, and courageous disposition. To have a child so accomplished and upright, you must be a very proud parent indeed, Uncle Lip. Seems like Sean Lee has decided to skip the formalities. Uh, well, he... He's a hard worker, yes. You should be sure to tell him you think that when he gets back. I... <sighs> Your son is young yet. It's normal for someone his age to be a bit... hot-headed. It's understandable to find talking about such things in person difficult. If there's a particular sentiment you wish to convey, perhaps we could pass it along for you. No, no. It wouldn't be right to ask that of you. <sighs> this thing between us has festered for many years now. In truth, there are some things that simply aren't easy for us to talk through. I've been in the tea business for most of my life, and I always hoped my child would do the same. Otherwise, how would he support himself? Over the past few years, I heard how well he was doing for himself as a guard. How his work was taking him to farther and farther off places. I also heard that he never gave up on wu-show dancing. It made me happy, but I was also worried. When you're young, you can handle all that physically taxing work and manual labor. What young person isn't capable of making a living that way? My concern is what happens when you get old. Every time I get to thinking like that, I cannot help but be reinforced in the belief that I was right. That I was right not to give in. I often regret introducing him to wushou dancing as a kid. If I had known how things would turn out, I would have never taken him to see those performances in the first place. It is only natural for a parent to strive to send their child down the right path. No one would begrudge you that sentiment, Uncle Ip. You need not worry. You seem quite young, Mr. Zhang Li. Yet you speak with such wisdom. Perhaps I have misjudged your age. <laughs> your words are too kind. Truth be told, 
One of my old friends has several grown daughters. Rather than fretting about their future, however, she prefers to let them find their own way. Then she's more easygoing than I could ever be. I fear I lack such an open mind. Uh, oh, I meant to say earlier, there is no need to be so polite. Uh, feel free to call me by my name, Iptak. Sure. So, do you also think I fret too much, Mr. Zhongli? <sighs> That's not exactly what I was hoping to convey. Only a fool would ask a parent not to worry about their child. But think of it this way. Raising a child is not unlike flying a kite. Hold the string too tight, and it can no longer soar. As my friend once said, if your children are aiming for the stars, clipping their wings will only cause them to come crashing down. You need to let out the line for a kite to soar. <sighs> it seems I was too stuck in my ways. You need not reproach your heart for caring. You simply need to loosen your hold a little. Indeed, with such a big heart, why not allocate the time you usually spend worrying about Gaming to the pursuit of other things? Like going for a stroll, drinking tea, or taking in the scenery. You never know what surprises could be in store. Things can change in the blink of an eye. <laughs> the blink of an eye, you say? Do things change so quickly? Children grow up in quite the same way, do they not? Day after day, year after year, sometimes in the blink of an eye, but always when you least expect it. As a father, I'm sure you know that best. <laughs> yes, you can say that again. One second Gaming was a kid, the next thing I knew, he was ready to fly the nest. Zhang Li certainly has a way with words. Oh, Gaming is back! Hey, Gaming, we're over here! Dad, Traveler, Paimon. Good, you're all here. Oh, and Mr. Zhong Li from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? You're here too? <laughs> a fated meeting indeed. We were just enjoying some pleasant conversation. Uh, <clears throat> Is everything resolved? Well, you could say that. What does that mean? Traveler, Paimon, come with me. I need to talk to you. Hmm. I'll come right out and say it. Those two bandits, you sent them, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's how we're starting off? Can't look me in the eye, huh? I guess I'm right then. Okay, but how did you know? At first, their mannerisms seemed a bit stilted. But once I got close, it was obvious that they possessed great skills. I was right on their tail, and it should have taken only a few steps to catch up to them, yet somehow, I was never able to close that distance. People with that level of skill would have gone about things differently from the start, like sneaking up on us while we were distracted. Unless, of course, their real motive was to lure me away from the group all along. Wow, you're pretty quick on the uptake. <sighs> I just have a lot of experience. I've dealt with many a ruthless bandit in my time, but I've never seen ones like them. In the end, I told them they would make good guards if they ever wanted to get back on the straight and narrow, and that they could hang out with me and Lee Yua Harbor anytime. Uh, you ever consider you might be a little too good at making friends? I'm guessing you guys were trying to help resolve things between my dad and me. <sighs> I appreciate it, I, I really do. But this conflict between us has been going on for a long time. Even if those two were real bandits and... I was able to subdue them and show him what I was capable of, it... It wouldn't change anything. You've seen the way he talks to me. It's not like that at all! Your dad really cares about you. You should see the way he talks about you when you're not around! Zhang Li was talking things through with him and he nearly agreed to let it go! 
<sighs> you don't believe us? He won't let it go. He can say as much as he wants to other people, but he won't talk to me. I'm certain of it. You told us you wanted to prove yourself to your dad. Why don't you tell him about all the hard work you've done these past few years? Will that even do anything? I'm not sure talking is enough. You won't know unless you try. Just like how you won't know if something is delicious unless you taste it. Listen to us. It's time to put these people skills to good use. You can make friends with anyone, so why not your dad? <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> you are very knowledgeable, Mr. Zhongli. I'm impressed. Despite my being in the tea industry for several decades, it seems, I still have much to learn about the art of tea tasting. You flatter me. It was nothing but a few humble musings. How much tea have you drank since we've been gone? <laughs> Ipdoc and I have found many a common interest. Our friendship, much like a cup of tea, seems to grow stronger the longer it has to steep. Well said, Mr. Zhongli. Gaming, Mr. Zhongli is very knowledgeable. You should take the opportunity to learn from people like him when you're in the city. Huh? Oh, uh, of course. Ahem. <clears throat> Zhongli? I have very much enjoyed our conversation, Ipdok. But I, unfortunately, have some unfinished funeral parlor business to attend to. Oh, I, I hope I didn't keep you. My apologies for taking up so much of your time, Mr. Zhongli. No need to stay on my account. When you're less busy, let's find a time to meet. I'll treat you to dim sum. It would be an honor. You two have a nice chat, all right? Thanks for helping us talk things through with Uncle Ip. Good thing you were able to pick up on what we were putting down. I have been around the both of you for some time now. You could say I have a certain level of expertise in that regard. As for my role in the conversation, think nothing of it. I hardly did anything noteworthy. <laughs> you never change, do you? Uh, why did you have us walk all this way? Paimon thought we just had to go far enough to be out of earshot. A friend approaches. Hello. So, you're here too? I've been here the whole time. A ghostly kite. Could that elusive director who be coming to Wangshu Inn once again? What is she doing here? Uh, I suppose it matters not. Given her relationship with Rex, well, Zhongli, I might as well go pay my respects. Uh, it's you. I thought you were director who. Ah, your arrival is most fortuitous. Do you want to try out this new gadget? The addition of the power source makes the takeoff more stable. It's just that... He seems quite immersed in the study of this device. I fear it's almost too stable. It completely negates the pleasure of seeing one's kite sway with the wind. It's a bit of a shame. In truth, I'm here because Director Hu dispatched me to purchase some items in preparation for Lantern Rite. I see. Much like she does every year. Much like she'll do next year, I would imagine. Hmm. Ugh. Am I wrong? Or has she once again sent you out to buy 
What is it, sesame oil or something? While we're on the subject, I do wonder why she is so obsessed with using sesame oil in the preparation of mixed vegetable dishes for Lantern Rite. A recommendation from Shang Ling, perhaps. What do you think, Xiao? I've only met Director Hu a few times. I'm hardly the best person to ask. Ah, and is that not a sign that you should visit Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor more often? It wouldn't hurt to grace the parlor with your presence now and again, when you are otherwise unoccupied. This one here is a traditional kite, one without any equipped mechanical device. Director Hu tasked me with studying the differences between the two to determine which one is of greater merit. Many hands make light work. Perhaps you could test out the other kite for me? All right. I have made my comparisons. If speed is what you're after, the mechanical kite is the better choice. Wonderful. I shall pass that information along to Director Hu. I'll leave these two kites with you. Perhaps you can find a few friends with which to partake in the activity. You might find it to be an enjoyable use of your time. Oh, uh, wait. Who enjoys kite flying? Well, I would imagine someone of your talent and wisdom is more than capable of finding out. So, you were testing out the kites for Hu Tao and even roped Xiao into doing it for you? Paimon didn't ask earlier because the situation was uh, awkward. I would hardly say I roped Xiao into anything. I simply sought the help of a friend. Besides, we did the testing together. Uh, seems like our pool of competitors is growing. Do you like kite flying, Xiao? I suppose I neither like nor dislike it. Although, watching a kite gradually ascend into the sky does bring me a certain peace of mind. Perhaps they're a bit like shell lanterns in that way. Hmm. Kite flying is also a pleasant form of relaxation. Have you ever thought about making a kite, Xiao? Cloud Retainer taught us how. We can teach you if you want. There's no need. Minogius was the only Yaksha among us who had an interest in matters of ornamentation and design. When Lantern Rite is over, come find me near Pervasi's temple if you have the time. Mm. It's getting late. I should go inform Director Hu of our findings. How has she been, by the way? Be sure to say hi to her for us! The last time I spoke to her, she mentioned that she would be visiting Chaoying Village in a few days. If you have the time, perhaps you could also make the trip. If you happen to run into her, you can pass along your regards in person. I'll keep that in mind. Take care, Xiang Li. See you later. See you next time. Uh. Ah. <sighs> Coming. Ah. Uh, you can go first. I don't have anything to say. Then I'll go. I still don't want to leave Liyue Harbor. Oh. I can't say I support that decision, but... <sighs> hey, let me finish before you get all worked up. <sighs> sit, Shinha, sit. You must be tired from your journey. Shall I pour you a cup of tea? Or would you prefer something else to drink? No need. I'm not tired. They're gone, Master. Perfect. The time is nigh for us to make an appearance. Do you remember the plan one recounted to you? Yes, Master. We aim to give them a demonstration of familial love. So, I'll have whatever you are having. All right. What are Auntie Xian Yun and Shen He doing here? Just how many people are involved in this scheme? I suppose all I can do is just... take a seat and see what happens. Perfect. 
I just so happen to have bought some Sunglo tea recently. It's quite the delectable variety. Or it would be if one has not been forced to drink it every day in the hopes of whittling down one's considerable stash. One has more than had one's fill already. Oh, forget it. Such thoughts detract from the present need to keep up the conversation. Has work been busy during the holiday season? Do you need my help with anything? Drunk guests can sometimes cause trouble, but I deal with them as you taught me, by pinning their heads against the table. Uh? Are Auntie Xianyun and Shanghe serious right now? <coughs> oh. <sighs> oh dear. While one was busy orchestrating this act, one seems to have forgotten about Shanha's various eccentricities. Mm. What, what, uh, what I meant to ask was, have you made any new friends? We live so far from each other, it would be a great comfort to me to know you were surrounded by good companions. Huh. You already know of my past circumstances. Recently, I've been conversing with Guoba in the kitchen at night. Guoba can't talk, but his companionship is a comfort. <sighs> the poor child. Her one friend can't even talk. I guess maybe Gaming is not doing so bad after all. Perhaps I've been too hard on him. <clears throat> Let's move on, shall we? Do you have any plans for today, Shenhe? How about we do something fun? That sounds about right. Take her to do something fun, and perhaps she'll loosen up a bit. Like we used to do when we would carry stones up and down the mountain from dawn until dusk, picking herbs to eat for dinner along the way? If that is what you ask of me, then that is what I shall do. Dad, uh, here, have some tea. Or, or no, wait, let's not have any just yet. <coughs> yeah. Oh, I simply can't listen to that any longer. Coming. I'd like to finish what I was trying to say before. I don't support your decision to stay in Liyue Harbor, because living there is too hard on you. If you come home... There will be people to help you. I'm not saying we have to live under the same roof. I know our personalities are too similar to avoid butting heads. But you'll have your entire family around you. Your aunts, uncles, they'll all do whatever they can to help. You could get a less taxing job, and we could... We could grab dim sum together from time to time. Huh. I didn't know dim sum was such an important affair, Master. Shh. Just think about it, okay? You don't have to decide now. Dad really has changed a lot. He would never have said these things to me before. But I... Thank you, Dad. Been long enough, don't you think? Oh, I'm unsure hopes they've made up by now. Oh, they're drinking tea in silence. That's not a good sign. Did Xianyun's plan not work after all? Uh, hey you two! Paimon's sorry we were gone for so long. We got to chatting with some friends and didn't realize how much time had passed. Perfect timing, actually. We seem to be just about done here. Yep, uh, let's go. I'll get the bags. <sighs> Gaming has grown a lot taller, hasn't he? <laughs> Master, did I say something wrong earlier? I tried to go along with your questions. But when I saw how you and that man reacted, I started to wonder. <sighs> Not at all. Certain unforeseen variables may have presented themselves along the way, but the outcome proved favorable. The plan was a success. Then I helped? Naturally. 
Your purity of spirit is one of your greatest strengths, Shenhe. You need not change who you are. You must be Mr. Ip! Thank you for coming all this way. My name is Charlotte, and I'm a reporter from Fontaine. You can find me writing for the Steambird. I invited you here not just to purchase your fine tea, but also with the hope that you might be willing to sit down for a short interview. What do you say? An interview? To advertise my teas? I suppose you could think of it that way. We Fontanians are big tea drinkers, too. The Fontaine Market. Then I'll need some time to adequately prepare. Perhaps we could sit down and discuss the questions you intend to ask in advance. Of course, of course! Please follow me! Is this person also involved in your plan? And here I thought I had lots of connections. <sighs> I suppose I've been humbled. You sure know all kinds of cool and important people. Over here! Yoo-hoo! Over here! Uh-huh. What? Auntie Shenyun? She probably wants to talk about the next phase of the plan. Let's go while your dad is still distracted. I take it that all is going well? Don't worry, Shenyun. Everything is going according to plan. I knew it. I knew that was all an act earlier. Auntie Shenyun is really something. She was so determined to help me, she didn't even care about making herself and Shanghe appear foolish in front of my family. She truly knows how to look out for others. I still have a lot to learn. As for the next step... Oh no! What's wrong, Gaming? Don't tell me you're the ones footing the bill for all that tea. I can't let you do that. Fret not. Reimbursements will be made. Exactly! Think of it more as an investment, as Ningguang would say. We pulled together the Mora so that Charlotte could place the order. She's gonna bring it back to the Steambird as a gift, as well as a sample of the regional specialty. Fontanians will probably fall in love with your dad's tea as soon as they lay their eyes on Charlotte's article. And once all the money from the new orders begin to roll in, getting our Mora back will be a piece of cake! Oh, okay. Business-related matters always seem to go over my head, but I refuse to let you all lose Mora on my behalf. I'll pay you back right now. We can talk about such matters at a later date. There are more important matters for you to consider at the moment, are there not? Yes. I've been thinking about it the whole way here. I have an idea, but I'd hate to cause even more trouble for all of you. Hmm. That is for us to decide. Yeah! We're all friends here! Plus, we wouldn't be here if we didn't want to help, right? Just tell us about this idea of yours. Okay. Whew. So, it's like this. Since Xiao already tested out those kites for us, why don't we also go buy one of those mechanical thingamabobs or whatever they're called? We can attach it to our kite! Hello again! Welcome back! I see you returned from your trip. I really do have to thank you for all your help from before. Thanks to you, my daughter was able to build a kite with her grandmother that very same day. She even wrote a long letter telling me how much she loved it. Oh, you should really be thanking Gaming, not us! Uh, I'll be sure to. And are you here to buy a kite? Please, take your pick. Oh, we already have a kite! We wanted to buy one of those, um, device thingies from Fontaine. Do you sell them separately? Ah, yes. Here you go. 
Please, take it, free of charge. The directions are in the box. It's not hard to install at all. Um, it doesn't feel right for us to just take it. Well, nor would it feel right for me to take your Mora. <laughs> Good luck in the kite flying competition. I'll be rooting for you. All right, then. Thank you. It's done. Let's get down to business. Looks like we finished everything we needed to do. Let's find a good place and put this thing into the sky. Chi-Chi, we're almost there! <laughs> okay... already? Uh, I need to load more film.
He's over there! I think I'll head off now, if that's okay. Thank you, little girl. Do you want us to walk you back? No need, no need. Master is waiting for me right over there. I suppose I'll go first this time. Okay. Your performance. I've seen many wushu dances in my time, but I've got to admit, what you pulled off there was breathtaking. Wow. I... I never thought I'd live to hear you say that. You're serious about doing this professionally? A absolutely. I... I know it'll be difficult, but... Then it doesn't matter. What I mean to say is, of course it'll be difficult. But if that's your decision, if that's your dream, then it doesn't matter how difficult it is. As long as you put in the work, then any obstacle can be overcome in time. Really, when I was young, I also... Actually, how about we save that story of my past for another time? All I really want to say is, I've changed my mind. And much like this kite, you also deserve to soar to new heights. Dad. Son. Son? <laughs> Haven't heard that in a while. I bet you're wondering what's gotten into me, saying all this. Well, um... <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Anyway, I know I've never found the chance to say this before, but... <clears throat> to me, Gaming, you've always been a great kid. <laughs> Alright, that's everything I've got. Did you have something you wanted to say, or...? <laughs> Seeing the two of them talk things through like this really gives Paimon a sense of accomplishment. Now go. Over there, your friends are still waiting for you. Huh? But... you came all this way. I'll be staying in Liyue Harbor for a bit longer. When you have time, we can grab dim sum together. Your treat, right? Dad... honestly... <laughs> <laughs> go. Okay, then I'm off. See you soon. I'd like to find and thank Auntie Shenyun, as well as everyone else who's helped me out. If everyone has time, maybe we could all get together and go fly a kite. Oh, Lantern Rite was simply amazing! I'm not sure I'll be able to sleep tonight. Oh, that? Yeah, interesting story. It was invented by a guy from Fontaine. His name is Eildeson. He's always tinkering away at some mechanism or another, 
He's even asked the Steambird to write about his inventions on more than one occasion. I believe I have a direct quote from him about this particular one. It, ah, yes, here it is. The device is powered entirely by mechanical components without the need for any additional energy source. Basically, it's a manually operated cranking device. How high it can fly entirely depends on how much force you can exert. Combining this invention with a kite. What a great idea, right? Oh, my conversation with Mr. Ip went really well. I've already set the first draft of my article back to the Steambird. It's a piece that contains all the pertinent information while also telling a story. I'm quite proud of it. Oh, that reminds me. I should thank everyone who made this possible for me. Especially that spirited lady with those peculiar turns of phrase. Miss Shenyun was her name, right? It was all thanks to your connections and creativity. I would have never thought I'd be able to bring such a special gift back to Fontaine with me. This was my first time experiencing a foreign holiday in person. It was... so exciting! The festive atmosphere, the contagious holiday spirit, the profound, storied cultural traditions steeped in symbolism. Oh, I almost forgot. Kuching even gave me a kite with a poem on it that she wrote herself. It goes, Dreams are like paper kites. With them do our hopes take flight. Sailing high above the clouds, they yearn for something more profound. Yet try we may and try we might, a deeper truth waits in plain sight. Though we hang our hopes in skies abound, many joys lie on the ground. I want to include this poem in my special feature on Lantern Rite. I'm sure a lot of people will love it. Yep, and happy Lantern Rite to you. Given your present countenance, one presumes you are missing some old friends again. One cannot help but be reminded of them. Pray speak. Unburden yourself of these sentiments. One simply wishes Monogius were alive to witness such peace alongside us. He was so skilled in matters of craftsmanship. Kite-making would scarcely prove to be a test of his capabilities. Were he yet amongst the living, he could have opened a kite stall. One is certain it would have been an establishment rich not only in profit, but also esteem. And if, as in the past, he were unable to involve himself in matters of the mortal realm, we could sell the kites in his stead. When we finished, we could bring him back wine and partake in drink and good company. Mooncarver, those are now but fond moments in our memories. Indeed. The dead are gone, so as the representatives of the living. Let us take in the sights for a bit longer. If just for his sake. So you're still a big fan of winter melon cake then? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I guess you heard everything Paimon was saying, huh? <laughs> of course. She was talking about you. As your father, how could I not listen? Remember back when you were a kid, and you would sit on my shoulders to watch the Wuxiu dance. Oh, on our way back home, you would beg me to buy you some winter melon cake. We would only buy two at a time, but before long, we tried the winter melon cake from every vendor that street had to offer. There was also that one time you used your pocket money to treat me. Do you still remember? Yeah, I remember. That was the best winter melon cake I ever had. Let's go back sometime. The shop's still there, and I remember the way. My treat, just like before. Are you sure? Absolutely. I don't get it. Is something wrong, Shanha? Tell me. Perhaps I can help. The color black doesn't get dirty easily. So I thought this outfit would be acceptable to wear to work. But Xiang Ling told me it was inappropriate. But inappropriate? How? She probably just meant the outfit isn't suitable for that particular environment and occasion. But for a festival gathering with friends, a nighttime stroll, or an important banquet, your outfit is more than appropriate, Shenha. So you're saying it's only something I should wear in front of important people? <sighs> I suppose that's another way to think of it. Hmm. Uh, one may have won the kite-flying competition, Yu Hung. 
but this prize should truly be reserved for another. You need not be so humble, honored Adeptus. Among all the kites, yours was quite literally a cut above the rest. Please accept this prize. You deserve it. Besides, I'm quite certain we owe a fair share of the success of this year's lantern rite to you. If you insist, then one can hardly continue to refuse. However, there is another matter with which one would ask your assistance. Of course. Hmm. One would be much obliged if you could distribute this case of Sunglo tea among the Millilith on duty. The security of the festivities rests entirely on their shoulders, after all. One presumes they could always benefit from something to invigorate their spirits. <sighs> Cloud Retainer is so thoughtful and attentive to others' needs. I would expect nothing less of an esteemed adeptus such as herself. Understood. I'll get on that right away. <sighs> a fortuitous result indeed. One's tea surplus has hitherto resolved itself. Our kite is so high up. Thank you for inviting me, Yao Yao. I am having a lot of fun. I'm glad. If you want, we can go fly kites some other time too. The fun doesn't have to end today. Really? How about we do it during the day next time? That way, we can see the design better. When it flies super high up, it will look exactly like a real finch. Okay. Uh, can I take this kite to bed with me? <laughs> but of course! Traveler. Being in the city isn't the only way for me to appreciate the lights and beauty of Lantern Rite. Look, Leoa Harbor lies just beyond this mountain. As long as I stand at this vantage point, I may freely behold the sights of all the kites slowly ascending into the sky. For me, that is enough. I invited you here because there is something I would like to do. I want to release a shell lantern, and I'd like you to be there for it. Yes. I apologize for its crude appearance. I, you are very kind, as usual. All right. It's time. Oh, Paimon almost forgot! Didn't Zhang Li say Hu Tao was also planning on spending some time in Chaoying Village? We didn't have anything else to do today, right? Why don't we go have a look around? Maybe we'll run into her! The mountain air is so refreshing! It makes Paimon feel like she can float around all day and never get tired! Cream! Gummies! Fuel fruit! Huh? Did you hear that? Sunshine! Blue skies! Good vibes! Right? So Paimon wasn't just hearing things. Hmm, that voice sounds really familiar. Well, we've got the time. Why don't we go check it out? If it isn't my dear partners. See, I told you that something good was going to happen during our travels today. I have to say, sometimes the Steambird's astrology column is spot on. It's just your lucky day. Are you guys also here to catch the festivities? Oh, and that reminds me. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite to you too! Uh, wait. If you're here for Lantern Rite, then what are you doing on top of this deserted mountain? And that voice we heard, that was you, right, Navia? Oh, impressive. You could tell it was me from that far away. 
You've got good ears. That or your voice is just really loud. Well, of course it is. After all, I'm a boss. Indeed. I suppose it's an asset. Sure is! Having a loud voice is a handy tool when it comes to communication. Wait, wait, wait. That wasn't even Paimon's point. Paimon just wants to know why you two were shouting from the top of this deserted mountain. There was something about almonds, maybe? And buell fruit? Ooh, is this some sort of secret code? No, it's not a code. The words are meaningless. Perhaps. But the act of shouting was very meaningful indeed. That's just what mountain climbers do, right? After all the hard work it takes to make it to the top, as you stand on the summit looking out at the vast scenery, it's not easy to resist the urge to release those emotions. <laughs> exactly. You get me, partner. I was afraid that it would cause a disturbance, so I asked the locals around here and they said it was fine. Apparently most hikers like to shout when they get to the top, so the locals are used to it by now. So, you see, it's not just me. I guess everyone shouts from the top of a mountain at some point in their life. Uh, speak for yourself. When you're stressed, don't you ever just get the urge to do something for no reason? Hmm, <clears throat> not really. If I ever get stressed, I just go hunting. Oh, that's a pretty good way to relieve stress. Hmm. What I choose to hunt depends on my mood. Huh? <laughs> um, anyway, why don't you two give it a try? Shout anything you want. It's a real stress reliever. Hmm. As long as Paimon has clothes on her back and food in her belly, Paimon doesn't think there's any stress that needs relieving. Oh, I bet you guys are just too embarrassed to let loose. No need to be shy. Even Farina was shouting from the top of this mountain earlier. Huh? Did Paimon hear that right? Farina's also here? In Chaoying Village? Believe in your ears. It is indeed as you heard. Actually, the reason we climbed this mountain in the first place was also because we heard the sound of shouting. Yes, we could just about make out someone yelling things like, Help me! And what should I do? So we hurried up here to check it out. And what do you know? Miss Farina was standing right there, all red in the face. She practically sprinted back down the mountain the minute she saw us. Ah, that reminds me. I believe what she actually said was, So help me, I will figure out what I should do about this script. Uh, so... You could actually hear what she was saying? Why didn't you say so earlier? I thought someone was really in trouble. I figured we would come check out the situation either way. Why not let her keep some privacy? Oh, seems like you caught Farina in the middle of some stress relief as well. She probably would have never thought... No, she definitely would have never thought she would run into anyone she knew all the way out here. I think so. Uh, we ran into Nervalette on the way here as well, but he was already on his way back, so they probably weren't together. What? Nervalette was here too? What was he doing here? It couldn't have been for vacation. I think it just might have been, actually. But apparently he only stayed for half a day before heading back. He's a very busy man. Hmm. Nevillette is not the type to take much time off. Taking even a half day for himself is already a huge step in the right direction. Didn't Charlotte publish an article on the Liyue tea industry recently? Maybe he was inspired to come buy some tea after reading that article. You know, just like you were. My situation is completely different. I'm here because I was asked to accompany you. The tea purchase is simply an added bonus of this location. You Fontanians in your tea drinking. Oh, it's not for me. I lost a bet with Ridesley, and now I have to buy him something. It was just a spur-of-the-moment sort of bet. Ridesley gets really invested in that sort of thing, but he couldn't care less about what he wins in the end. 
You could give him mint plants that you plucked from the side of the road, and he wouldn't even mind. Uh, if only he was that easygoing when it came to talking business. <laughs> In any case, I'm pretty sure the tea you bought is this region's specialty. What is it called again? Uh, Nervalette even mentioned it earlier. Yes, yes, that's the one. You didn't really buy ten boxes, did you? <sighs> Please. Do I look like someone who would fall for that sort of marketing trap? Ah, that reminds me. You guys said you only came up here because you heard my voice, right? I hope it didn't put you out. You must have had other plans for the day. Oh, that's right. Who tell? A few days ago, we heard that a friend was going to be in Chaoying Village. So we decided to come and see if we could run into her. Oh, dear. We've been chatting for quite some time. I'm sorry for keeping you. <laughs> That's good. We should probably head out and look for Hu Tao. No need to stay on our account. We just got up here, so we're gonna stay around for a little longer. Mm. Go and meet your friend. We can meet up in Chaoying Village later. Sounds good. We're gonna head down the mountain then. See you later! Chaoying Village is known for its tea, but you know what else they have with tea? That's right, dim sum! Didn't Gaming say something about dim sum being eaten in the morning? Oh, Paimon wonders if we can still get some at this time of day. Oh, well that's fine too. Paimon doesn't care what kind of tea it is as long as it comes with some tasty snacks. Now let's see what kind of yummy things we can find around here. Uh... Paimon's not seeing things, is she? Is that Farina standing between Zhongli and Hu Tao? Wonder what they're talking about? Hmm, Zhongli knows a lot of stuff. Maybe he's telling Farina about Chaoying Village. Oh, or maybe Hu Tao is trying to rope Farina into being one of her clients. Hey, this isn't the Fortress of Meropede. But, Paimon could be convinced for the right price. Let's say, loser buys the winner three huge bowls of seafood kanji. Since Zhang Li is there, Paimon bets things are pretty tame. It's decided then, Paimon votes for tour guide Zhang Li. Alright, no time to waste. Let's go see who's right. Great, now Paimon shouting too. Oh, well aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Seems like our luck just keeps on growing. <laughs> that we were able to meet you both without prior arrangement must mean that this is quite the serendipitous meeting indeed. Uh -huh. Oh, so both of you are acquainted with the Traveler and Paimon then. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you didn't learn that one from me. Ahem. <laughs> I must admit, I am a bit surprised to see you here, Traveler. But seeing as you're a hero who's been all over to that, it makes sense that you would be well-traveled and well-connected. Since we have found ourselves in each other's company within this fertile land, allow me to take this opportunity to wish you a happy Lantern Rite. It appears you have been to Fontaine, then. Given your proclivity to spread good deeds wherever you go, it's no surprise that you would make the acquaintance of a celebrity as illustrious and celebrated as Miss Farina. Uh, <laughs> that's quite high praise. What I mean to say is, you flatter me, Mr. Zhongli. Although I've built up a certain following within Fontaine, it is no reflection of strength or wisdom. I stand before you right now as nothing more than an ordinary traveler in search of beautiful scenery and creative inspiration. There is definitely more to Mr. Zhongli than meets the eye. I could tell as much from our conversation earlier. 
Given his breadth of knowledge on both academic and worldly matters, there's no way he hasn't heard about what happened in Fontaine. Is he just feigning ignorance for my benefit? No, 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 no. Ayya, you're no common tourist. I simply won't have you talk about yourself that way. Huh? Does that mean Hu Tao also knows? You may not have heard, friends, but... Uh, <clears throat> Miss Hu Tao... Miss Farina is now one of my esteemed clients. Uh, uh, uh. Yep. <laughs> okay, okay, you win. Hmm, guess Paimon will have to break into the hidden stash at the bottom of her shoe. Uh huh? What's this about winning something? Don't tell me. You two were placing bets on us. as to what you were talking about. Oh, I see. That means you, my friend, must have guessed that I was trying to promote my business to Miss Farina. That I do, my friend. What was Paimon's guess then? Paimon thought Zhang Li was showing the newbie around. Ah, by newbie, you mean me, right? If that's the case, then Paimon's guess was also correct. Oh, that's right. Mr. Zhongli was telling me about some great sightseeing spots in the area. Ha! You see? Paimon was right, too! Since both of our guesses were right, there can't be a winner or a loser. Hey, don't be upset, Traveler. How about this? You buy Paimon a bull, and Paimon will also buy you a bull. As for the third bull... Since I was the subject of the bet, perhaps it should go to me? You know, as a congratulations for the huge deal I just struck. <laughs> I was just joking. Anyway, I should be the one treating you. The funeral parlor is about to bring in quite the sum after all. Oh, Paimon almost forgot to ask about the most important question! Did I... something happen recently, Farina? Huh? What do you mean? Uh... Well, you know, with you enlisting the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor and all... Oh, well... yes. Really? Oh no... Paimon is so sorry for your loss. Although Paimon may have not known the person, please accept Paimon's deepest... Whoa, 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 it's not like that, Paimon. Huh? But Paimon just thought... Since you hired the services of a funeral parlor and all... Hey, it's not that big of a stretch. Really, Paimon? It's not like you don't know me. Do I look like I know anyone who would ask me to coordinate their funeral? Miss Hu Tao is simply helping prepare some props for my film. Not too long ago, I read a collection of horror stories from Liyue. The content was spectacular! In fact, I still feel the need to sleep with the light on even now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. Now that Fontaine's biggest star has returned to the stage, I figured it's about time the industry enjoyed a breath of fresh air. Hey! <laughs> That's pretty good! I'll have to remember that for my ad posters. Oh, Paimon sees! That makes a lot of sense. So, did you come to Liyue just to enlist the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? Well, not exactly. My original plan was to just relax and enjoy the sights. But then I ran into Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhongli and, well, you know the rest. I suppose it was meant to be. It was a fated meeting indeed. Zhongli sure loves his lofty turns of phrase. B 
But if you ask me, it's all thanks to that man who stopped to ask for directions. Oh? Who was it? It's someone you know. Wanna take a guess? What? How did you guess that on your first try? Very impressive, my friend. Your guessing game is spot on today. Huh. Hyman never thought Nervalette would be the type to get lost. I'm sure he didn't get lost. <laughs> Even I was able to find my way to this place without any trouble. He was already getting ready to leave by the time I arrived. He just wanted to ask someone about the quickest way to get back to Fontaine. Yep, that's exactly what he asked. This area is full of mountains and rivers. It's normal to not know the fastest route. So, were you the one that pointed him in the right direction, Hutel? Of course. I'm also a guide of sorts, you know. So naturally, I also have a great sense of direction. But, speaking of your friend... What about him? He doesn't get out much, does he? Ah, uh, no wonder. He was stiff as a board and way too polite. I would have never guessed he was here on vacation if you hadn't told me. All in all, he was only here for half a day. I'm pretty sure he is the only one who would consider that to be a vacation. Oh? This gentleman you speak of must keep a demanding schedule. I'm sure he does. You didn't see him, but he was dressed like he was about to attend some important meeting. It wasn't anything like what someone would wear on vacation. Is that so? Wait, you didn't see him, Jean Lee? Unfortunately, no. At the time, it appeared as if Director Hu and Miss Farina were having quite the productive conversation. I know matters of business can take much discussion, so I decided to fetch some tea for them. What a shame. That gentleman seemed like a sophisticated sort of guy. I actually think you two would have hit it off. Is that so? <laughs> to borrow Miss Farina's turn of phrase, perhaps it just wasn't meant to be. Well, with the traveler around, I'm sure you'll have a chance to get to know each other at some point. That's right. He's got more friends than he knows what to do with. Well, that's certainly true. Oh, that reminds me. If you get the chance... You should try and talk to Nervalette into loosening up a bit. Just tell him the Palais Mermonia isn't going to fall apart if he disappears for a few days. <laughs> he shouldn't keep himself cooped up all the time. Even clams open their shells to let in fresh water every once in a while, right? If he's really that much of a stickler for protocol, he can fill out a leave of absence request. He'd uh, have to approve it himself since he handles that sort of thing now, but... You know what I mean. Seems like this gentleman is also in charge of something pretty important. Hey, uh, sounds like a pretty uptight sort of guy, all right. In my experience, a leader needs to be able to roll with the punches. That also includes knowing when and what to prioritize. It seems like your friend still has a lot of growing to do. If I remember correctly, he's already several thousands of years old. Uh, you're quite right, Miss Hutao. Oh? Traveler, Miss Farina, those two individuals over there appear to recognize you. We saw you all chatting over here, and we're wondering if we could join in. 
<clears throat> um, please, excuse the interruption. Oh, <laughs> so polite. No apologies necessary. Any friend of the Traveler and Miss Farina is a friend of mine. Ah, <laughs> straight to the point. I like it. It's getting late. If we want to catch a boat back before dark, we should probably get going. Indeed. Then, Miss Farina? Oh, uh, uh, yes? When are you planning to head back? Do you need us to escort you? Oh, um, I, I don't think that will be necessary. I mean, you're not my subordinate anymore. You don't need to look after me. Um, I didn't mean it that way. It's normal for friends to travel home together if they run into each other on the road. Mm, there are a lot of mountainous roads in this area. I imagine they'll be even harder to navigate after dark. Exactly! Just like in those ghost stories. Eight paths converge in a wood. Beside them an old house is stood. If you dare to go inside, not a soul will greet your eye. But if you take a closer look, there may be something you mistook. A candle flickers to and fro, yet there is no wind to make it so. What is its secret? What could it mean? In this wood, where mystery screams. <laughs> My dear demoiselle, uh, uh, ladies, no, uh, I mean friends, please take me with you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Gotta say, Farina, you are really quite the character. By the way, did I hear you mention that Clorand used to work under you? Then you must have also been a leader at some point. Uh, well, that's, uh, all in the past now. Besides, being a leader is hard. It wasn't the right job for me. I prefer how things are now. I can come and go as I please, and get to enjoy the sweet taste of freedom. I see. Well, you've certainly picked an apt place to relax. Chaoying Village is an exemplary choice. Only the best. <laughs> and I've learned a lot, too. Thank you so much, Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhongli. It's fine. You've thanked us more than enough already. The next time you're in this neck of the woods, I'll treat you to some dim sum in the city. Dim sum. Is that some kind of liyue term for snacks or desserts? They are a part of it. It's basically a table full of as much tea, sweets, and good company as you can manage. Oh, so it's basically a tea party. <laughs> Sounds great. Make sure to order the winter melon cake and the lotus flower crisp. They're so sweet and delicious, Paimon knows you'll love them. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it then. Wait, but didn't you guys say you were here on vacation? How come you're all going home empty-handed? Of course I am. I bought tons of fun things to bring home with me. A kite, a parasol, a little tin frog that jumps. Oh, and a stuffed toy of a mythical beast. Clorand is the one who didn't buy anything for herself. So, all you're bringing back with you is that tea? And some tea-flavored hard candies. They're for Sijuin. Clorand isn't much of a shopaholic. Well, one of us has to practice restraint. Hey, I'm hardly reckless with my Mora. I'll have you know, all the purchases I made today were well within my budget. Me? Oh, well, I bought some tea, of course. 
I just had to try all the varieties recommended in the Steambird. Other than that, just some bits and bobs, you know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. They should all be things I can use. I think. Uh, now Paimon's even more confused. If you bought that much stuff, where did it all go? Into one of Linny's magic packets? Oh, <laughs> actually... Monsieur Neuvillette took them with him. Oh, so that's what happened. Wait, what? Why did he take them? Oh, he's not hoarding treasure, is he? <laughs> oh, that's quite the imagination you've got there, Paimon. Monsieur Nervillette just saw the amount of bags we had and offered to take them back for us. I felt a bit bad at first, but, uh, I really did have a lot of stuff. <laughs> he even offered to deliver my gifts to the Fortress of Meripede for me once he's done with the day's work. Nervillette is a man of his word. If he says he can do something, then he means it. See, even Clorand was happy to take him up on his offer. If even his trusty subordinate agreed, then who was I to refuse? Wow, he seems like a real gentleman. Maybe he's not as uptight as I thought. If only the funeral parlor had an employee as thoughtful, proactive, and responsible as him. Right, Zhang Li? Indeed. Karen said Novelet offered to deliver her gifts to Risley. So if we go to the entrance of the Fortress of Meripede, maybe we'll run into Nervalette! Oh, but we don't know exactly when he'll show up. Oh, that reminds me. A new year of work is about to begin. If there's anything you want to talk about, Zhongli, you know you can come to me. I'm all ears. Does the director have any concerns? It just seemed like you were a bit preoccupied today, and much less talkative than usual. He barely said anything other than, Is that so? And, Indeed. If you ask me, I'd say you're having a midlife crisis. You're getting to be around that age, after all. Is that so? Ugh. <laughs> I jest. Given its distance from the city, Chaoying Village enjoys a much slower pace of life. Surrounded by such peace and tranquility, I also seem to have developed a proclivity for inactivity. I apologize for making you worry. Ah, um, I see. What do you think, Traveler? Is this atmosphere putting you in a lazy mood, too? Wow, you are getting really good at these kinds of lines. Indeed. Look! It's Nervalette! We lucked out! Oh, it's you. It has been some time since our last meeting. Few people frequent this location. Since I was able to conclude my work early for the day, I thought I might take a walk and avail myself of this area's peace and quiet. You call this early? Do you always work this late, Nervalette? Strictly speaking, that depends on the agenda for the day. I am hardly bereft of time, however, so working late is of little consequence to me. Really? If you have so much time on your hands, then why did you only go to Chow Ying Village for half a day? Hmm? First, I should clarify that I was referring to my lifespan, rather than the time at my disposal on any given day. Second, I was unaware you possessed knowledge of my trip to Chaoying Village. I see. Thank you for informing me. Yes, they have been safely delivered. <laughs> I have to hand it to Clorant. Just a simple gift delivery, and she has the great and mighty Udex at her beck and call. I was just passing through. It was merely an act of convenience. All right. Then I hereby confirm receipt of the goods on behalf of the staff of the Fortress of Meripede. A verbal receipt of confirmation? 
Is such a formality really necessary for a small matter such as this? Guess not. This quantity of tea, though, seems a little excessive for a gift, don't you think? Before you know it, they'll start accusing me of taking bribes. Ah, about that. Much of that is my own excess, I'm afraid. Oh? Why? What happened? It was buy ten boxes, get half off. Ah, that explains it then. Well, go ahead and leave them to me. I'll get through this stash as fast as I can. You have my thanks. Oh, there's something else I'd like to give to you. This is... A stone slate, engraved with a symbolic design. Well, that is an apt description. It is, in actuality, a legal codex. A legal codex, huh? Hmm. Before the advent of modern writing utensils, information was recorded on stone slabs such as this. The law was no different. Oh... okay. Since ancient times, the scales of justice have symbolized the fairness and impartiality of judiciousness. As a tribute to that sentiment, this slate was designed after a traditional legal codex, and engraved with a symbol instead of text. During my travels recently, I chanced upon a roadside stall offering tourists the opportunity to try their hand at the ceramic arts, so I decided to have a go. We joked with Cloran some time ago about gifting you a legal codex. So, here you go. Ah, so that's what this is about. I did not expect you to remember it as well. In any case, I hope this can be considered as a reasonable attempt to join in on the banter. It is a very good attempt. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Even your sense of humor centers around the law. That's an impressive level of commitment. Well, a gift of this significance deserves to be put on display, and I know just the place. Front and center in the fortress's showroom. Ah, surely there's no need for such a grand gesture. Just kidding. I don't have anything like a showroom. But we do have a storage room. We can put it next to all the mechanical parts Sijuin has collected. That sounds good to me. Village. Indeed. Of course, while I was there, I also took the opportunity to taste the local spring water. The aftertaste is much purer than what I have delivered to me in Fontaine. It stands to reason that the long-distance transport has a tendency to imbue the water with extraneous emotion. If you want to experience the true flavor, you simply have to go to the source. Perhaps I should organize some time off to do the same elsewhere. Then we are of the same mind. It appears my desire is justified. If you say so, but you know you don't have to justify a vacation, right? You can just take one. After all, you're hardly bereft of time. You can do whatever you want. You're quite right. I suppose I suffer not from a lack of opportunity, but rather a lack of inspiration. However, after reading a few articles about Li Wei's holiday traditions, the idea popped into my head and made itself quite at home. Seeing as I was free of responsibilities for the morning, I decided to depart at once. Refreshing. My spontaneous outing seemed to inspire quite a few other spontaneous decisions as well. Take, for example, my foray into ceramics. At first, soil from the ground is granular and unforgiving, but had the right amount of water and it becomes soft, moldable, and able to take shape. In the past, I never thought about how quotidian vessels were crafted, but now I have participated in their very making. This is also something I made today. That's a ladle? I meant that it was supposed to be some long-necked sea creature. 
Peter. That was indeed one of my inspirations. Really? You like it? To tell you the truth, given your unexpected arrival, I find myself quite unequipped to give you the welcome you deserve. Around such an important holiday such as this, human custom would dictate that gifts should be in order. But I'm afraid this is all I can offer. If you'll have it, that is. That is precisely why it would do me such a great honor if you accepted. You are most welcome. Happy Lantern Rite. Hmm. Approve a leave of absence request for myself. That sounds like it could easily lead to a vicious cycle of self-indulgence, something which couldn't be in further violation of protocol. But... I suppose I understand her point. My proclivity to refrain from personal outings does, in part, originate from a sense of responsibility toward my duties. But it is also due to a lack of desire to engage in the human world. But now I see that the human world is indeed full of many interesting places to discover. Lantern Rite marks the start of the new year in Liyue. In the spirit of the season, then, I wish you a year of success as vast and endless as the open ocean.